Here are five behaviors of emotionally manipulative people and the subtle ways it shows up in friendships and what you can do about it if you observe any of these behaviors. Number one, they play the victim. You can see this by how they talk about their other friends. When they talk about other friendships, are they always the victim in how that friendship ended? When they're going through things with their friends, is it always them being the victim of someone else's behavior? Do you ever hear them taking accountability or giving a balanced account of how, what really happened in the friendship? Are they always the victim of everything that happens to them? Or when you bring something up to them that maybe a behavior that bothered you and you want to discuss it, do they take the victim stance or do they take responsibility and listen and are open to understand where you're coming from? Number two, gaslighting. Gaslighting is where they always kind of twist the truth a little bit to make you question your reality. Sometimes it gets to the point when you're feeling like you have to write things down or you question, were we there? Were we at the same place? Did we hear the same thing? Do I need to start recording our conversations? Because you said one thing and now you're saying you said something totally different than what you said before. It's just always a twist of what really happened and you really start to question your memory of things. You're probably being gaslit. Number three, blame shifting. Emotionally manipulative people cannot take responsibility for their behaviors, so they always find somewhere else, someone or something else to blame. This could be as simple as you calling your friend out on saying something that hurts your feelings, and then they say, girl, no, you are just being too sensitive. Number four, the flattery ends. This is when somebody starts, starts off treating you with a lot of flattery, maybe a lot of availability, and all of a sudden that shifts when they feel like they have you in a good spot where they want you. They start to maybe um, devalue you, say little slick things about you or your performance in public. They um, stop giving you all that flattery and attention. You start to notice more distance and more pulling away. This is another behavior of an emotionally manipulative person. And number five, and this one is huge, isolation. Ma emotionally manipulative people like to isolate you. Now, a subtle way that this may show up in friendships is say you're like in a, a group of friends or you're in a group together. You guys know each other from a specific environment. They have a negative report about just about everybody else that you interact with in that environment, which isolates you because you sort of start to think that it's not worth developing relationship or friendship with anybody else but that friend. So you're relying heavily on one person, that one person in the environment versus looking for other friendships because you've heard so many negative things. You may be a very independent person with your thought and it doesn't work on you, but if it's happening, it is a red flag that this person is trying to manipulate you into isolation in that environment. Now, if you notice one or two of these behaviors in your friends, it's best to just kind of be curious about it and talk to the friend. The best way to talk to a friend about something that's making you feel uncomfortable or a, manip a manipulative behavior is to let that person know that it's how it's making you feel. Like say they're saying negative things about people in the environment and gently say to them, I kind of want to develop my own opinion about people. So if you have like prior exper experiences with people, maybe keep, if you can keep them to yourself, because then it kind of gets in my head and I start to think, bring that into my interactions with people rather than forming my own opinion. And if they're receptive to that feedback and they change their behavior, then that's a good sign. If they're not receptive and they maybe use another emotionally manipulative tactic like gaslight you or belittle you or blame shift or, you know, say like, oh, girl, you wanted that information. I could tell you'd be wanting to know what's going on with people or whatever they do. That kind of just takes the attention off the behavior that you're calling out to them and puts it somewhere else. Then that's a red flag. You notice all of these traits in a friend that you're developing a friendship with, then it might be an opportunity for you to evaluate if 
One, you have the emotional tools to deal with a person like this. Or two, if this is somebody that you want to continue to walk closely with, maybe you want to distance yourself a little bit because these are not good signs if you're trying to develop a friendship with someone. Especially if you've already experienced some sort of friendship trauma from an abusive or manipulative friendship in the past, you don't want to continue to be in friendships with people that exhibit these behaviors because they're going to probably trigger a past experience and you may respond in a way that's disproportionate to what's actually going on. What we don't want to do is continue to show up in our relationships as triggered and emotionally reactive. So when we see these signs, you really want to kind of look at is this a conversation that can be had? Can I be curious and compassionate about what's going on? Or am I going to end up being triggered and feeling like I'm in another abusive friendship? We need to have a level of self confidence that we can be healthy in our relationships. And when we keep on showing up in relationships where we get triggered and blow up and react and do things that are not healthy and friendships end, then we're we're kind of creating a story that we're not capable of having healthy friendships. So the key is to to observe these things ahead of time and evaluate if this is a person you can be friends with. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is a bad person. As we're healing from friendship trauma, it's a good idea to look at these things because we are more sensitive to these behaviors. They affect us more intensely and it could trigger behaviors in us that we're not proud of and it just creates a negative cycle in our heads that we're not capable of having healthy friendships when we are. You're going to continue to learn and grow and learn how to have healthy friendships but part of that is understanding your limitations, recognizing your red flags, and setting healthy boundaries. It's okay for you to distance yourself when you see things in somebody else that are not going to be good for you in this season. And continue to look for healthier people to be in relation with. I hope this helps. Have a great day. Bye.